So the number one thing that Moses was able to do was to see that the bush was burning. God was trying to bring his attention to a place. Please. Please, please, please. This act of having fire burning inside of a bush and the bush is not being consumed. It was a well-planned sign. Okay? Please, look at this. And then as the bush kept on burning, Moses said, ah, why is it not being consumed? Let me turn aside to see this great sight. Which means there is something that God knows that he has placed inside of every man. That makes his heart to begin to beat fast when he sees a sign, a miracle. But if that trigger, if that switch, if that fuse goes off, it doesn't matter how long the bush is going to be burning. Still, there are certain people that can never be attracted by such a sight. No, 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 no. You are, you are, you are, there is that you are not getting there. Do you know some of you, the reason why you got born again is because of a simple miracle that happened. But there are other bigger miracles that God performed to other people, but they never gave their lives to God. It is because of the level of your sensitivity to the activities of the Spirit of God. When Moses looked at the bush, he said, what, what is happening here? Now, let me tell you something that you might have never seen there. What was busy burning in the bush, it was not God, it was an angel of the Lord. And the person who then spoke to Moses was never the angel of the Lord, it was God Himself. You can see it on that same scripture that the angel of God appeared in a burning bush. And then God spoke out of the bush. Let me explain to you what is happening. So we have an angel of God burning, busy burning. That's all that he has to do there. Just burn. Just continue burning for hours. That one, he has never been given a message to deliver. God said to him, you go down and just burn. We are Find the place. Go and enter into a bush and all that you have to do there is just to bend. Never should you say a word. Burn for 20 hours, don't speak a word. Leave that to me. And then the angel of the Lord came and he entered into the bush and he began to bend from there. And as he was burning, and the Bible says, and Moses turned aside to see. Look at this. The Bible then says, and when God saw, that Moses turned aside to see. That is when he spoke. When God is if. Ha. If he had not turned aside, he was going to leave the place without hearing the voice of God but seeing the manifestations of God. God says, I'm going to do something that is going to attract his attention. If I can see him responding to a sign, and when he draws closer to that sign, then I will talk to him. 
kasukwedera page kona ichiratidza ichi ndotaura naye it's a properly planned fee rongwa wakatowaridzwa which means if he is not going to respond to the sign i am not going to talk to him he does not deserve to hear my voice. Listen to me. Listen to me. Which means signs are easy to come by. Miracles can happen to people that are not even born again. God can rescue people from situations. That's, that's a burning bush. But that is the first stage. God, every time when you see God talking to somebody who is not born again, it's just God is trying to call the person to a place. Where you can then begin to continue talking to him now. So imagine if it was you. Having seen that kind of a sign, and you never thought of getting closer to the bush that was burning, you would have missed the voice of God. But when he, when God saw, when God saw, as if he was, he was waiting for that, when God saw that Moses turned aside, which means. His level of sensitivity is very, very high. I can talk to this kind of a man. Now, there are certain things that God does. Not really because he's enjoying doing those small things, but he's calling for your attention. And when you respond to those small things that God is trying to do, then a bigger voice will follow. He's a guru and then God said to him, Moses, 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 from the bush, this is God now. Twice his Kaviri. name was called. My God. My God. I'm not just talking about stories here. I'm talking about the same God who also called me by name. I know his voice. I know his accent. I know what happens to creation when the creator speaks. There are some of the people in the Bible you hear them saying, I thought I was dying when the Lord appeared to me. Look at me now. Look at me now. God called Moses by name. And yet Moses knew that he was Moses. I'm saying that because I've heard other preachers saying, I don't need a prophet who calls me by my name. I already know my name. You, you are still at a certain level of foolishness that is giving you problems. Listen to me now. Be careful to end up attacking certain things just because you can't do them. Why would God open up his mouth and call a man by his name and said, Moses, Moses, twice? I will repeat, I am saying this because there are people that are busy telling people that a prophet should never call you by name because you already know your name. Why do you go to these churches where your names are being called out and your address, you already know your address? Are you lost? I've heard people saying that, are you lost? I don't need my... <laughs> Because of, what because of what you are saying now, it's a sure sign that you are lost. You need help. 
Ekuda kwe zvauri kutaura iko zvino chiratidzo chiri pachena chekuti vakarasika uri dari batsiro. You are lost. Akarasika. Because how can you have your bible with you and you are not able to see all that? Netika sei kuti uine bible rako hausi kukwanisa kuti God is calling a man by his name. Mwari ari kuda namunhu nezita rake. Moses. Moses. Did he know that he was Moses? Anga asinga zive here kuti ndi Moses. I tried to deal with that in a certain service that we had here. And I was trying to ask a question. I said, okay, so how should we prophesy? I said, so what should we mention? Because the same people I had them trying to also give their old prophecies. And they were calling it word of knowledge and so on. And what they were trying to do, they was to prophesy. And getting to people and telling them that I'm, I'm seeing that you are having some migraine headaches and so on. And I saw people confirming that, yeah, that's very true. I was having some headaches. It's that different from calling out a name. Because when you call somebody's name, he knows already that that's my name. It's the same as telling the person that you have migraine headache. He knows that he has migraine headache. Please, please, please. Please. I'm trying to address a situation now. Because there is a spirit of competition that has now, if you can't call out a person's name because he already knows the, his name, and it means also you can't describe his condition because he knows his condition as well. You are preferring mentioning diseases and conditions because, you see, even guesswork can help you to do that. You can't have people gathering in a place as many as we are here and not have one person having a migraine headache. No, no. That, that is kids net. Okay. Okay. You have to prove to the men that you are talking to that you are hearing from his creator. <laughs> there is a level of a dimension of the prophetic that the Bible says, and a person shall fall down before you and say, Surely the Lord is in this place. Which means the prophetic has to be taken to the dimension that the Bible says 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 that and God said to him I've seen the afflictions of my people like he's looking at your affliction now he's a God that can see you have to understand everything that you have on you remember you are not the first one you can't carry what you have to God and surprise him he transferred his image to you. Which means if you can see eyes on yourself, it means those eyes are coming from God. If you can hear, if you can touch, God can touch in a much better way than you can touch. Which means what you are going through now, God can see. He can see.
And when he finishes seeing, he's also a doing God. He has got hands that do not see. He will do something about that situation. He's not just full of eyes everywhere. He has good eyes, he's good hands. Hands not to see, but to do something about your situation. He's a miracle working God. And he said, because of what I've seen, I've seen my people crying. I've seen them laboring, working under the hands of the taskmaster, under the hands of demons. And for all these years, I acted as if I wasn't looking at anything. I seemed to be a God who is not concerned about the affairs of my people. But now because they have cried unto me, they were waiting for me and yet I was waiting for them to cry. And now that they have cried, I have come down to deliver my people from Egypt. Egypt. And the bush that was burning was not in Egypt, it was in Midian, in Horeb, the mountain of God. God is not manifesting himself at the center of the problem. So there's an awesome miracle here. It's, it's all right, we'll come to that, we'll come to that. That's a miracle that is taking place. <laughs> she couldn't do what she's doing now. <laughs> she was just but dead, men of God, and she rose up and began to run. She was just but dead, she was just but dead. From the point of death, to running like that. Somebody put your hands together for Jesus. Please. Come on, somebody, come on, somebody. Come on, somebody, come on, somebody. It's all right. We may be seated, we may be seated, we may be seated. Are you ready to listen to this? Okay. Bondage is taking place in Egypt, not in Midian. Affliction is taking place in Egypt, not in Midian. Poverty is taking place in Egypt, not in Midian. And yet God is coming down to a wrong place. And he's telling his servant that I have come down to deliver my people. From Egypt, but we are not in Egypt here. We are in Midia. The problem is in Egypt. Measure the distance. Even from the pulpit to that place over there. Why then is distance becoming a problem to you? Say your Kanganiswa Nichinambu. That's another miracle. It's okay, you can sit down. Let's, let's talk about this. 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 Listen to me. Listen to me. What is wrong? It is wrong in Egypt. 
And God is coming down over here. And he's saying, Moses, I have something that I would want to do. Please, I don't know. You know, when I get to a, a revelation like this one, I feel like fire all over my body. Listen to this. A God who is surrounded by angels that can burn forever. Why not going to the place himself and deliver his people? Some of you, you underestimate God's protocol. You still, you are yet to understand that having a man of God in your life is not a man-made idea. It's a God-made idea. It's not some pastors and bishops somewhere that thought about it of trying to have a position. No. And angel of the Lord that is that can burn until eternity he is not burning in Egypt. All that God and his angels are trying to do is to convince a man. Can you allow us to use you to deliver our people? And the man was supposed to say yes before the people can be delivered. I want you to deliver them. I'm finishing now. Listen. I want you to deliver them from that bondage. And you will come to this same place where we are talking to each other now and then you will worship me from this place. With millions of people surrounding you, you will come to this place. This is God. And Moses is thinking about the levels of witchcraft in Egypt. There are wizards and witch doctors in Egypt that are, that are committed to their work. That can practice on him anything. So he's now in a place where he begins to argue with God. He says, so of all the people, who am I that you can send? Talking about an encounter there. And then, and then God said, I will deliver my people through you. And then, and then he said, so, what if they are going to ask me, who is this God that spoke to you? And God never said they will not ask. God said, you will answer them and say, the I am has sent me. So what he is asking for is a comprehensive description of the deity or of the God that is sending him. You have to have a revelation of the God that you are serving. That's where we have a challenge in most of our lives now. It's because we are serving a God that has never described himself to us. Please, uh, please get this. Moses is determined. Moses was Peter. He's not that kind of a guy who can just jump into starting a ministry. And come up with a definition and some visions and some mottos of his ministry without having a clear definition of God. You see now, please. You see, please, look at this. He's not interested in the numbers of the people that are going to follow him. 
He knows that there are millions of Hebrew people in Egypt that he is going to be leading out of captivity. It is not concerned about having thousands or millions of people coming to his ministry. He is concerned about the name of the God that called him. Who are you? Who are you? What kind of a man are you? What, what, what is this that I'm looking at? How can I be hearing a voice coming from the flames of fire? I'm ready to be used by you, but please explain to me what kind of a system is this one. I can hear your voice, but I can't see you. Where are you? Who is this? And he said, I am the I am. I don't want you to give them a name. And that will then limit my activities. Which means I will be whom I have to be. He's not, listen to me, he's saying I am that I am. Which means I am the now God. I am the current God. I am a relevant God. I can meet a current need now. I am not an expired God. I am not an outdated God. I am a current God. The I am that I am. Which means you can perform any miracle today and tomorrow perform another different miracle because even tomorrow I still am. So I will not give you a name that will limit my performance. And this is what you are going to tell them again. I'm closing. Don't lose me on that one. Go and invite the elders of Israel. The elders, the mature. And tell them that the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, appeared 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 unto me listen 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 this is not some kind of doctrines that you are getting from another church no. because I've heard people say is it right to call upon the, the, the God of somebody else Okay. The best place for us to get an answer is not from preachers. Let's hear from the mouth of God Himself. Listen, he enjoy being identified with a certain individual. And this is not an angel, this is God. Where I am sending you now, you have to make an announcement and make it clear. If you want me to use you, it has to be known that I am not the God of Moses, I am the God of Abraham. That's where we have a problem right there. <laughs> because we believe that God is for all of us. And listen to me. That is very correct. God is for all of us, but certain levels are for certain individuals.
Before you start performing those <laughs> miracles, usati watanga kuita minana yoyo. Introduce the God of your father. He said, the God, he, said, he said, he said, tell them. Because you know, you know the dangers of just jumping into those miracles. Sit down, let me show you. It is because people that you are going to encounter there, they don't want a small God. Because they know that Pharaoh is a seasoned demon. That requires a seasoned God. If you introduce a new God there, they are going to, you are going to face resistance. The God that you are going to be using to in setting my people free. It has to be a qualified, a God with an experience from Abraham. Which means he is not starting with you. He is a God who raised your father. He is a God who picked your father to go to Marara and go to So you are not serving a God who is going to start with you. He is an experienced God. He has dealt with serious cases before you. So, 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 sit sit So tell them that the God of Abraham appeared to me. I'm about to tell you something that you need grace to understand. When you finish telling them that the God of Abraham appeared to me, and all of you together, yourself and the elders, which means the mature. So this is talking about age. I'm talking about the mature. Which means the, the mature, it's only the mature that are going to understand. That I have sent you. So when you go there to deliver, don't start with the millions. Start with the mature. Explain to them that you have had an encounter with the Lord, the God of Abraham. And it takes maturity for the mature to understand. Because ordinary church people, religious members, they are never going to understand that a person like themselves can have an encounter with the God that they can't see themselves. So when you finish explaining the vision to them, please, hey, listen, and then you shall go before Pharaoh. Yeah. And all of you, yourself and them, and, and you shall say unto Pharaoh, the God of the Hebrews has appeared unto us. I told you that you, might, you are going to miss it. It's no longer Moses saying that. He appeared to Moses. And Moses appeared to the elders. And then the elders are supposed to appear before Pharaoh. And then declare before Pharaoh that the God of the Hebrews appeared to us. us, us it's not on the God that only prophet do you know that the easiest way for you to have an encounter with God 
is when you can have an encounter with a man that has had an encounter now give me give me a reason why do we have people jumping up and down right now you see miracles taking place what were they waiting for? Now, sit down, let me, let me close. Let me close. Let me close. close. Oh, my God. The elders they never say to Moses, okay, let's go to that place. We want to see for ourselves. For them to believe what he was saying, they didn't have to go to Horeb. They didn't have to travel to buy tickets to go to Midian. Having a man that is coming from there. They said, we are ready to confront a system. And when we say that we have seen God, we are not lying. How come they never felt like they were lying? They never felt like they were lying. The elders never saw the burning bush. Never. Okay, why? Can I show you something? Hey, sit down. Sit down. You have to sit down so that I will show you what I'm saying. Sit down. Sit down. Why? Because when Moses looks at a burning bush, and a Moses is a Okay, you see, the burning bush is over there. Come. You are the people of Israel. He is the Moses. He went to Horeb and he saw the bush that was burning. But the miracle was that the bush was not being consumed by the fire. And the fact that he also is able to come out of that environment and consumed by the event. So when the elders look at him, they are looking also at another bush that had had an experience with God. Because it was known that if you see God, you die, you are consumed, you fight. So Moses now becomes their burning bush. They don't need to go back to the mountain to see another bush. That bush is for Moses. Moses becomes our bush. So they are have you seen that we have had people coming from the moon? And they are coming back and their families waiting to celebrate and to welcome them. Because it's an intense environment. It's a environment. And, and people are being saluted just for that. And here comes a man from an experience. He's coming from a place where you cannot survive after having seen the face of God. And when they look at him, they are saying, You are just as good as that bush that you're talking about. Because you are surrounded by fire, and yet fire is not consuming you. So to us, we are not going to wait for a miracle that you perform. You have become a sight, a wonder, a miracle to us. So I'm not following you because of miracles that you can do. But you are the miracle that God has performed. And that is why you have turned aside into UFIC to see a great sight.
Nicho chikon zero wa tsau kira ku UFIC kuti uone chiratidzo ichi. Why because you are looking at a man. Wakatari samundu that has gone through fire. Wapinda na nomoto by the media by people I have been criticized by big people, by young people, by small people. And yet, that fire never touched my body. That fire never quenched my spirit. So looking at a man who has had an experience is just as good as looking at a bush that is burning. And not being consumed. See, now let me close. Let me close. Let me close. So they have the guts to go and confront the system that was giving them problems for years. And they are saying, the God of the Hebrews appeared unto us. All of them. They are saying the same thing. As if they are coming from Horeb. They are not coming from a place. They are coming from a man. They are saying, the God of the Hebrews appeared unto us. My God. My God. My God. An appearance of a man in your life becomes an appearance of God. A man, I'm not talking about jokes here. I'm talking about a man who has seen God. And this kuta ora zinyambo pano ndiri kuta ora munhu waona mwari I remember ndorangarira in several occasions kwashinji where I've had encounters with the heavens aita mawekwe nedenga look at me tarire there are times when i'm sitting pane nguva apo ndinenge ndigere and I'm taken to places in the realms of the spirit. And you see an established spiritual nation. You don't see even one bacteria flying in the atmosphere. There is so much power in the environment like gas. To an extent that every time when you breathe, you take in divine oxygen. Every breath that you take in, it's another year that is added to your life. Because and sometimes there are moments there was a day when I entered it I said today I'm not going to look at anything I want to see it I want to look at how many people have access into this dimension so I was trying to identify or to see faces that I would say okay I know this man there were very few people I'm not, talking about, I'm not talking about entering into heaven. I'm talking about the dimensions of the spirit. And this is a level where people are supposed to belong. People where people are not born into, but where people mature into. 
Wete chekuti vanhu vanoberekerwa imomo asi vanoyarukira imomo. After you are born again and then after being born again you still don't have access. You have to mature. Wamberekwa patswa usati watenderwa kupinda unofanira kuyaruka and you become the heir in the kingdom. We are no longer like a slave. Wova mujikiwe maturity. Wova mujikiwe naka usi siri muranda mu mambo iwo wone kuda kuti wayaruka. Do you know do you know why people end up backsliding? It's simply because what they had and they thought it was an encounter, it was not really an encounter with Jesus. Jesus yes. when you see him, If he is to appear to you not from heaven but from inside when jesus decides because some people they might say no you can't you can't you can't be talking of those experiences remember what he said he said and i will show myself to him Jesus can appear to you now there was a scripture that shocked me in the bible when Jesus was raised from the dead and he appeared to the guys that were going to Emmaus but then the bible says he appeared to them in another form he can take upon himself another form and appear to you i remember looking at jesus i saw him in his form you know that when you see him now you can even see the scars See. And the scars, it is not because he was not able to heal himself. It is the evidence of love that was supposed to be kept. When he comes to you, Jesus, when he comes to you, when he chooses to appear to you, Look at me, please look at me. When you see him coming, he has got an image. And some of you you, you, you misunderstand because you have got a, 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 a picture of something that does not exist. You know, if Jesus appears to you the way I saw him, he can appear to another person in a different form. But let me describe to you what I saw. When Jesus comes to you, when I looked at him, I'm Teresa. Do you know that? What is going to amaze you is that he can choose to introduce himself. Verbally. He can tell you that I am Jesus. Yes. Or he can just cause you to know. Do you know that even with the with the with the story of Saul? Jesus was not really introducing himself. Remember, because Saul said, Who are you, Lord? And then the Lord then said, I am Jesus. When he is approaching you, when Jesus is approaching you, a few meters away, you can feel there is. There is a clear cloud that surrounds him. 
Don't clear, but it's a cloud. It's because you can feel it. When it's coming close to you, it can push you. But if you look at his stature, he's just like this. He's just like this. The way he walks, he walks like a man. And every step that he takes, he doesn't stagger. When you see him coming, that the way I saw him, I'm talking about encounters here. So that you can begin to benefit from this life. He looked at me and in what I saw. Do you know that when every time when you feel like you are holy and you are perfect and you are wealthy and you deserve the presence of God, it is because the presence of God is not even there. Listen. The closer he gets to you, the more you would want him to leave. And you know that if he is to leave now, you have a feeling of regret that if he leaves me now, I'm going to regret for the rest of my life but you feel like it will be better for him to leave when you see Jesus coming to you when I saw him coming to me do you know you almost like you can almost tell that he is not here to destroy me because he seemed to be the only creature that God beget. That you can look at and you can, if you look, every other part of Jesus is very exciting, very glorious. But one thing that made me to tremble one thing that can cause me to shake even now is the look in his eyes. No. Jesus if you look at Jesus' eyes, his eyes are well developed. So, Ake when he looks at you you begin to see all of your shortcomings and you know that you don't deserve but what you can see in his eyes it's love before he can begin to talk to you you can see rudo <laughs> You see, if you look at his body, he's a man that you can say, you can, you can even say, okay, let me give you a suit. He's like a gentleman. Well-organized, and the way he moves. You can even tell that the power contained within that body just by the way that is moving you can tell just by looking at him that if this man is to do anything now he can split this universe into, into four, four parts just by raising up his hand like that he can do that when you look like at him sometimes you feel like he's even struggling with the power that he is carrying because 
And what is, what is amazing when you look at Jesus is how he's able to manage that power. Within that limited time,